Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry. The mowers and blowers. I'm over at my mom's house, and uh, we're all ready to go skiing. Got this stuff all taken care of, and I thought I'd whip out really quick the snow blower and blow this out just really quick.
So here we are. We're at Hunter Mountain. Just got here. And it's snowing. We got a great parking spot. We're right here at the lodge. So get this. My daughter and I left the poles in the other car. So we come over here, I'm like, oh my God, we got no poles. So uh, me and Andy just will go poleless is what, you know, we just said. Because we've been skiing since we were little kids, you know? So we can go poleless, no problem. But then I asked this dude, I go, hey, you got a lost and found? And he's like, yeah, it's lost and found right there in the corner. So I go over there, it's like mismatched stuff all over the place, stuff that people lose, you know. Set of poles right there. Grab them. Now we're going to hit the slopes. <laughs> Ski lift chair that we're on today. This is the first run. Uh, it's not too cold. It's pretty. So we just got done with our first run. Uh, the conditions are really good. I mean, like super powdery snow. I can't remember the last time I had su super powdery snow. So uh, really easy to ski. Um, it is snowing a bit now. And I'm going to be holding my GoPro with my uh, right hand on this run. Uh, I, I didn't put it on my helmet because well, I didn't trust the sticker that, you know, you, you stick the mount on, you know? Yeah, but if I drop my phone, it's done for. We're not going So, uh, what did the ski lift ticket cost per adult? Um, I want to say 78. So, it's uh, 80 something for uh, an adult ticket and 70 something for a. Uh, child ticket which is under 16 I believe so it's pretty expensive to ski and this is just Hunter Mountain uh, when we went to Orford and uh, Montreal in Canada it only cost like $46 for an adult ticket and that's in Canadian dollars so it's like half price to ski in Canada uh, Canada is much better than the States I mean by far there's almost no lines in Canada you just Bag milk. Ski right to the uh, lift and go. Even today during the pandemic where they have a lot of restrictions, there's still a line to get on the lift, you know? Um, the lodging where you eat, you know, when you get hungry and you go into the lodge and you order food, that's closed because of uh, the pandemic. So now what everybody does, the new norm over here, or, or any ski lodge for that matter, is that people tailgate in their in the parking lot you know they'll bring like barbecue grills and portable propane stuff and they'll make lunch in the parking lot that's how they do it or they bring a sandwich or something to keep it in the car you know that that's their lunch because they don't sell anything at the lodge you can't go into the lodge and sit down and buy hot food and eat it you either bring your own sandwich and you eat it on the slopes or whatever uh, i think i have a crushed danish in my pocket <laughs> So anyway, I'm gonna be uh, videotaping Andy going down the hill because he says he's never seen himself on video before skiing. So I'll be following him down most of the way. Not that, but you know those like circle mirrors? They're squishy. Yeah, they are. You push it, it's soft. No, you know. Wait, are we talking about two 
This ski trip is a lot more convenient because we all have our own skis this time. We didn't have to wait an hour to go rent skis and boots and all that other jazz, waiting online and stuff. So having your own skis is definitely worth it. Uh, I've, I've been skiing, me and Andy, we've been skiing since we were little kids. And so we've always had our own equipment, but you know, having, having kids in the interim, you know, um, we grew out of our skis, so you know, we just chucked them, whatever. So for probably a year or so, we rented skis, which is a pain in the ass. No rush. So now that we got our own skis now, it's much more convenient. Just drive up to the slopes and uh, buy your ticket, you know, or you had to reserve your ticket online. And you pick up your card. Now the card, you just stick the card in one of your pockets in your sleeve or something. And now you walk by and somebody scans it, you know, so it, it's no more lift tickets on your zipper anymore. Okay, we're at our second run now, and I'm going to be following Andy down the slopes. One hand on the camera. I'm just not going to use my poles on this one. I don't really use my poles anyway. As a matter of fact, there's a funny story. We forgot the poles in the car. The other car. Oh, a fall. We have a fallen soldier. Let the girls go first. All right. some traffic there. There's my daughter coming down. This is our, our second time skiing? Third. Third time? Kids these days, they learn so fast, you know. Uh, actually, when when Andy and I first started skiing, we learned also the f our first time we went up. The, we went up on the. Uh... I'm gonna be right in his ass this time. Gain some speed. Just don't fly off the mountain, Henry. I just splashed like a ton of snow on this kid. Oh, yeah, lots of powder. Uh, conditions are really awesome. I mean, it's all powder, just rare. So I'm following my daughter Krista down this time. Hi. <laughs> she says her ankle is really sore because uh, she got new boots. And I told her, I said, uh, when you get new boots, especially ski boots, ski boots are not supposed to be comfortable like, you know, like Uggs or something, you know what I mean? They're, they're gonna be stiff and it's gonna suck, you know, and your feet are gonna be sore no matter what you do. Um, if it's too tight even, Ski boots are definitely not the most comfortable things in the world. It's very powdery, as you guys can see. Very powdery. It's hardly any ice in any places. Conditions are very good.
Krista, you keep going. I'm gonna, I'm gonna video Anna that. So there's Andy over there with the red helmet. Keep going. You okay, Krista? Do me. All right, so here we have Henry skiing. Go! GoPro, stop recording. Right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> that, that was that was great footage, man. <laughs> I got the whole thing. <laughs> Are you still recording? Yeah. Fifty-year-old legs aren't like they used to be. Like when you're, when 52 you're year old up, right? legs. And then you land, it's like, wait, I don't have any strength in my legs anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Focusing on our that was awesome, bro. That was good. Getting close to the bottom. Look at the line at the uh, lift. So no matter what, you gotta wait. But because we're a, we're a party of five, the ski lift chairs are sixes, right? So we can all go up together in one lift. Um, they try to keep as many people away from each other as possible because of the pandemic, but uh, mostly they'll separate uh, parties. How you doing, Krista? Thanks, Caitlin. So that's the new way now. Just scan it, you know. I won't find another Krista. No, you will not. Yep. Did I ever find someone with a name with the same name as me? Yeah, the librarian. She doesn't spell the same way. Oh. It's just with a C, I think. Okay, guys. For those of you who have never skied before. I'm going to take you on the process of getting on the ski lift chair. So stop. Go! Slide over here. Wait for the chair. Down. I'm 
And lift off. Well, like they say in the airlines, rotate. Rotate is when you lift up on the yoke and the front wheels of the airplane go off the runway. That's when you do lift off. <laughs> Don't drop it. I'll try not to. <laughs> so this is run number three. Feels like we've been out for an hour or so. I thought the line would be worse. It's not bad. Lines aren't too bad. We waited like 10 minutes on that line. Did we? Did we? Yeah, easily. But no, in Canada, it it's, uh, it's like seven. there's no wait at all. You just ski right to it. There's nobody waiting. It's awesome. But you know what? Canada's borders closed, so we gotta oh, gotta do what we can. Right you know. Right okay, the ski lift chair sometimes slows down because somebody falls or something. This is a um, slope side condominium. They're very expensive to stay there. I just missed it. Uh, Andy was just standing there and he got caught his thing and he fell. Anyway, so uh, we're going to try something different today, or right now at least. This is our third run and this is what's called a black diamond. It is for expert skiers. It says most difficult. So Krista's only been, my daughter Krista, has only been skiing, this is our third time skiing, and she's going to go down it. You know, honestly, it's not really that tough. Uh, I used to ski in Colorado, and their black diamond or double black diamond is insanity. It's also very deceiving. You can't tell of the you can't tell the steepness of it. Yeah, I'm gonna try to give you a perspective. So right there, they're 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 uh, horizontal, right? And then if I just scroll to the left like that still doesn't look like it's that bad but when you're standing here you're looking down it's pretty steep uh, it's pretty icy on on these very icy not bad at all though. That's Andy's daughter, Caitlin. And there's Krista. Chris, so you're doing fine. That wasn't bad at all, right? No. Actually, I don't think that was the beginning of it. I'm not sure. But it doesn't seem... Well, it seems a little steep now. Wait, film it. Yeah. <laughs> Where's that at that? We're not, we're oh, there he is. There's right? Andy. Yeah. Whoa! That wasn't... That wasn't uh, Black that Diamond. Was it's like, it's, it's nothing, man. Yeah. Go ahead, Krista. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And Krista did great. She's yeah. more parallel than, you know, a lot of beginners, man. Look at her. Yeah. She's very parallel. She's just got to get tight, you know, less, less of a stop. Caitlin, how you feeling? Caitlin, yeah. you okay? <laughs> huh? My ankles are hurt. Krista's ankles hurt too. 
Good job, Krista. Hey, Krista, your ankle still hurt? I don't know if it hurts, like, but it hurts and it stops. Is your ankle still hurt? Yeah, my right one. Your left one? Yeah. yeah, but I think it's just, I don't know why, but I think it's left over from the last time that we see. Oh. Okay. okay. See how the girls are going down and then you can't see them anymore? They're going like over a lip where then it drops a little bit more. There you go, now you can see. And you're at the lip. Good job, Krista. Huh? That was an icy spot. That was an icy spot. That's, I feel like I'm not... Yeah, that, feel, that's the uh, difference, is that this is very powdery as opposed to what we're used to, which is some icy substance. Hack powder. Yeah. This is loose powder. It's different. I'm when, when I hit one of those bumps, like, like, I, feel like I'm, I feel like I'm going to fall, though, when I hit one of those bumps. you got to um, sort of like bounce through the powder. You know what I mean? I, I got it down at the top, and then it like just didn't... Oh, wow. What a picture. Oh. Uh, hold on. <laughs> My We're in the middle of run number four, and the sun has come out, sort of. But here's a great view. As you can see, the snow is still falling, flurrying. So, um, can we do this? Uh, we gotta go underneath uh, where it's to the red. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's nice. No, you can't see anything. Okay, so, um... That's it. Hi. Well, can we meet at the chair? At the, uh, at the lift again? The um, Ashlyn wants to go down the double blast. No, just... no, no. It, this is a short... We can actually... We might be able to actually meet even before the lift, but... You don't want to? I mean... I don't want to be there. I do it too. <laughs> so uh, we left my daughter and Andy's daughter over there. Um, his other daughter and I are over here. This is double black diamond. Extremely difficult don't go down here unless you've been skiing a few times otherwise you could die <laughs> all right so look we're on the top here and you can't see the bottom you can only see the other side of the mountain all right let me get to this cliff here just to show you guys what double black diamonds like you know, I will admit to you guys, I haven't been on a double black diamond in a while. Holy cow. I know you guys can't get the perspective that I'm looking at now, but um, it's pretty darn steep. Wish me luck. If not, that's the end of the channel. After lunch, we just go home. <laughs>
yeah that's it so uh we went on four runs that's it and it's about 11 30 and the line was starting to get really long over Not at really the ski long, lines longer. pretty long so we figured we were gonna take a break and uh we're gonna have lunch so we're having spicy Chinese, Chinese or Japanese? I have no idea. Korean spicy Korean. noodles. And so he's got his uh, propane tank here with a pot of slowly boiling water. And that'll be our lunch because there's nowhere else you can get any food. Well, there is just, you know, it's too long of a wait. And I've, got a, I've got a smushed Danish in my pocket. <laughs> Would you guys like to have some? Here. Have some. Here, have some. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Open your mouth, damn it, and eat it. Jesus Christ. Okay, we're on our sixth run of the day, and I think we're gonna call it quits around eight, so maybe two more runs. Oh, they said 8 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> My daughter had the balls to come down this one. This is a uh, double black diamond. Most difficult. As you extremely can see. Difficult, actually. Extremely difficult, yeah. <laughs> And uh, she wasn't afraid to do it, so oh, I was. you were afraid, but you did it. I did it. Yeah. And so this is the middle of that trail. If you look down, you can see the little ants moving. Beautiful up here. Go. <laughs> I want to go after they talk. I don't know if they will. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, I'm Henry from Mowers and Blowers. As a YouTuber that deals with small engine equipment on a daily basis, I worry about the harmful effects of the 10% ethanol that's in your unleaded gas from your gas station. Here on the East Coast, as winter nears, I think about storing my summer lawn equipment for the winter. Ethanol absorbs moisture, and what it does is it could rust or corrode and clog up your jets in your carburetor. That's why I use Ethanol Safeguard with stabilizers from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Before you store your machines, a little bit of Lucas goes a long way. When you're ready to use your machines again, Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.